Welcome to the Vernon Hills Update. The update offers information about a variety of village services. You'll meet a few of your neighbors and you'll find out about upcoming events. On today's show, we'll find out about a new cell phone law that may impact your driving habits after January 1st. We'll learn about the students involved in Technology Conference, a great learning opportunity for kids and by kids in grades 3 through 12. We'll visit Countryside Fire to find out how you can help your neighborhood by adopting a fire hydrant this winter. We'll watch as Mayor Roger Byrne and the Vernon Hills Queens open the gates to this year's light show, and we'll recap the particulars for this year's A Winter Wonderland. We'll check in with the Vernon Hills Police Department for some important holiday safety reminders. And we'll revisit the sights and sounds of the 2013 Village Tree and Menorah Lighting Celebration. If you have comments or suggestions, please contact Mike Storto at 847-918-3560 or email Mike S at vhills.org. Thank you for tuning in to the Vernon Hills Update. Hi, I'm Kim Christensen with the Vernon Hills Police Department Crime Prevention Unit. There is a big change coming to the traffic law very soon. And with me to talk about it and explain it to everybody is Officer Black with the Vernon Hills Police Department. So Officer Black, thanks for being here. What is this big change that everybody, especially motorists, need to know about? Well, as of uh, January of 2014, you will not be able to use any handheld uh, electronic communication device. By electronic communication device, meaning a cell phone? Yes, sir, a cell phone for text or talk. Well, how is that different from the current texting law that exists now? As it is now, drivers are not allowed to text while they're driving a vehicle, while they're operating a vehicle. How is this different from that? This actually uh, prohibits the use of your cell phone in your hand for talking as well. So it's going to be illegal for the most part for a driver of the car just to have it in their hand, whether it's a cell phone or a GPS unit or, or whatever the case may be. Yes, sir, that's correct. Are there any, and this takes effect January, January 1st? January 1st of 2014. So what will happen if a police officer sees someone that has a cell phone in their hand or obviously up to their ear when they're driving a vehicle? Well, it would be up to the officer's discretion whether or not they want to issue a warning for that particular violation or whether or not they're going to issue a citation. Okay. Are there any exceptions to the law? I know in uh, the texting law there are some exceptions made for some circumstances. Are there any exceptions for the new law that's going to take effect January 1st? Well, the exceptions for the general public are obviously going to be if there's an emergency situation and you need to dial 911, then you can obviously use your cell phone. Uh, law enforcement officers, firefighters, ambulance personnel are exempt from the law. Uh, if you're using a uh, push-to-talk device, like a CB radio or a ham radio, uh, or even a cell phone that uses a single button push-to-talk, then you may use that as well. So a driver can have the cell phone in his hand, but just press one button pretty much to start the conversation or end the conversation? That's correct. The law pretty much doesn't want you to have that cell phone glued to your ear and distracting you while you're driving. So a driver that's uh, driving down the street and they have the cell phone up to their ear, it's pretty obvious that it's a violation of the law. Yes, sir, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Why do you think is uh, the new law, why did they do this? Why did the legislatures enact this law? Well, they're really looking at it from a public safety angle. Uh, folks that have the cell phone up to their ear and they're talking, they're obviously distracted. Folks that are using the cell phones or or the other electronic communication devices for texting, they're, they're focusing on that device. They're not focusing on the roadway where their attention should be, especially when they're operating a motor vehicle. Okay, is there any place, there's, there's obviously gonna be a lot of questions come up. This is gonna be extremely new to everybody. And I think it's gonna be kind of a culture shock when January 1st rolls around. People are gonna still be doing that and they might be surprised when they get pulled over and start getting tickets for that. Is there any place, any, uh, where can residents go? Where can the viewers go? Where can citizens go if they want to look at the law and have any specific questions about it or maybe want to research it themselves? 
The Illinois Department of Transportation has a website. The information is available on that website. Uh, we can also put up a link on our village website for them to uh, go and look at the new law. Okay. Well, there you have it. I would strongly urge, and Officer Black does also, do not leave that cell phone in your hand. GPS unit, cell phone. If a police officer sees you with it, Officer Black just mentioned, if a police officer sees you with it, you're going to get a ticket. So please don't do it. Think a little bit. There are some exceptions to it. You can read those exceptions online. Any questions, if you do need to ask any questions, you can give me a call at 847-247-4889. Thank you very much. We have come over to Deer Path Middle School in Lake Forest, but we're with, we're with our friend uh, Amy Lambierdi. Mrs. Lambierdi is the 21st Century Technology Specialist over here, and our new friend Patty Fleeser, who's involved in the library media system over here. And we've come to talk about something that even though we're in Lake Forest, we've got an opportunity for all you kids in the Vernon Hills area. Thanks for taking the time to join us, ladies. Thank you. And before we get started on our um, opportunity for our young technology aficionados, let's talk about school. Because I think if you don't have kids in school now or if you've been out of school for a while, school, you've got a lot of stuff going on. We happen to be in the uh, Lake Forest green screen room. So That's you've right. got stuff going on all the time. We do. We currently are in the green screen room in the new cube, which stands for communication, collaboration, and creativity space. And one of the things that our students are doing nowadays is making digital projects. And they're able to be creative and collaborate together on things for the current curriculum. So it's not like when you and I were in school. We weren't <laughs> doing projects and green screens. And exactly, and it's, so it's, it's not like the project is, the, it, it's, it's in connection with all of the curriculum you already have going on. It's just another tool, all this technology. Yep. And because we do live in a digitally connected world, our kids are able to be creative and take the curriculum, which is rich, and blend it in mm -hmm. with, our, with our resources that we have in today's world. And, and there are a lot of resources. Now, I know we're happen to be at the at Deer Path Middle School, um, Hawthorne, the same thing. We've got, you know, whether you're, you're working with an iPad or you're doing a podcast or whatever you're doing or you're going in and looking for resources to uh, turn around and, and work with your, your classroom curriculum, there's a lot going on in all of our schools today. Well, I was excited to hear about the Apple TVs that Hawthorne has just brought in because there's so much that can be done. And we here in our school have embraced some opportunities with Apple TVs. TVs and just the mirroring and it's it's neat. It's a new it's a new and world. I know you and the and the library. I mean, we think of library as we always used to think of it in the olden times, books and a quiet place where you went to read books. There's a lot going on there. There's a lot more going on mm -hmm. in the libraries, not only here at Deer Path, but Hawthorne and many other schools. And we talked about collaboration with students, but there's also the collaboration within the staff. And in library, we are so much more than books now. We are working together. Ms. Lamberti and I work together and on helping students not only research, but then use the technology. And here, I like to say our, our new space in the cube, we call it a library and so much more. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not our grandparents library anymore well, and we think about so that's the kind of things you're seeing with the kids nowadays and the kids are doing stuff that's just incredible and it's very interesting and they like to share it amongst mm -hmm. each other like you said the collaboration is key to learning nowadays it collaboration is. is key now you have an opportunity we've talked about this a couple years ago yeah. for young learners and young technology uh, people to share their information can you talk to us about the SITS conference SIT conference coming up the SIT conference is coming up February 22nd in 2014 and the neat thing about the SIT conference is this is a conference for kids kids by kids and actually it's one of my favorite days of the year and the reason is because we learn so much from today's learner and a lot of the resources that I have I've learned from students so grades 3 through grades 12 can join us at the SIT conference and it's a Saturday conference that anybody who grades 3 through grade 12 if you have an interest in anything science or technology engineering math that STEM piece come explore or share which well, is really I was going to say because you have the, the students are the presenters as well so you can come and learn and be with kids who think the same as you do yeah. or 
you can share a piece that you've already put together. Yep. And we have, a, it's across the state of Illinois, and we have a committee, and Patty happens to also be on the committee with us, and we plan for this big day, and it's an opportunity for kids across the entire state of Illinois who share a similar interest to come together and share and learn. Well, we're lucky, too, because we have a site that's nearby for our kids. Tell, tell us about, you're, you're going to be at Aptekissick, correct? We're at Aptekissick Trip in uh, Buffalo Grove. And uh, so not only students from Buffalo Grove, Vernon Hills, Lake Forest, um, I can't even remember who at Libertyville, so many other so many other area schools and students had come. I think we had over 300 students last year. And what's great is not only are they in the workshops, but they're presenting. I think we find so much today that when students struggle or come are having problems with technology, oftentimes I look to the students themselves and says, who can problem solve? Who can come help us out? Who has an idea? And it's our students who are really the creative ones, sometimes more so than those of us in the teaching positions. Very exciting times. And I know that you've been doing this for several years, so you're getting really good at it. But tell me, like, if I was at home, um, you might be watching this as you get ready to go into winter break, kids. It's a perfect time to think about what you might want to do if you want to be a presenter. What are some of those topics that people are talking about? Like to give Ooh, an idea if you were thinking stuff. about putting some together. Because we have like some, t um, some students around who maybe have something almost ready to go that they've already worked upon. What might, what might they do? What might you see at a, a SIT conference? We see things all the way from Lego robotics to Minecraft to web tools. Um, we've seen kids that have shared iMovie creations, um, how to make green screen movies. Possibly it could even be how to create an app. Um, coding, how are they with Code Academy or any coding websites that they're using. So anything that really is uh, an interest of yours that's technology related, you can come and learn from others if you want to get better at it. Or if it's something that you're doing, you can create a presentation, which is a 30-minute session, and share it with others. And you have to have a parent or a teacher or an adult sponsor you. It doesn't have to be just your teachers, but it can also be a parent, too, who will come and register as well to sponsor you okay. as and, a presenter. And you don't have to, I, I heard there's like even small group presentations. So if you have a buddy yeah. or if you've got a group that you've already worked on something, you could... Yeah. about putting it in. And I think last year we had a group of like five or six kids that were students together at one school and they chose to work together on their presentation over that 30 minute period. Okay. And if people want to know more, I know the website has a lot of information. You can kind of see some of the things that have happened before. You can see how to register so you can come. Uh, that, that's probably a good way to get started too is just to come and see a presentation and understand what it is. So. It is because again our the website for more information is sitconference.org and we should probably let everyone know that SIT stands for <laughs> Students in tech, Involved in Technology. Okay. And what, the thing, too, to promote is we are always looking for volunteers. So if you're a parent or a teacher who is interested in this, and this is something that maybe you want to bring into your district and you're just not sure, we are always looking for volunteers to help us that day to staff the event. So are there a lot of people there then um, involved? Are they educators like you that are doing a lot of this work? Is that what you see on your committee? I think a lot of the, in the committee itself setting it up, we're technology people, library people, just those interested in that, the, in the, the technology and, and the collaboration. But we had volunteers, we had a lot of parent volunteers, parents who were interested. Um, it, it, it's really, it just is a whole, mishmash, if that's a word, of, of, of different people helping us out. And uh, it's really what's really neat about it is getting all the different schools together. And you're seeing people outside of the community that you live in and go to school in. And then that is, on a, to itself, a really neat way for the kids to communicate, collaborate with those outside their community. Mm -hmm. And I should point out again, you said grades 3 through 12. I, in years past, it's been at Stevenson High School. So just the, the fact that it moved to Aptekissick is a little different this year, but that doesn't mean those high schoolers aren't uh, encouraged to be there or anything. Yeah, we will take, yeah, grades mm -hmm. 3 through grades 12. The other thing, too, talking about volunteers, we've had some retired people who we've even come back to help us and support the event just to learn what is going on in today's world with our digital learners. So that's another piece to reach out. But grades 3 grades 3 through grades 12, as well as young and old, we'll take everybody. <laughs> You'll take, so it's coming up February 22nd, that's a Saturday. We're talking to you about it in December, so you have time to get your registration in to attend or find your sponsor and come up with your proposal. And uh, if you want more information, you can always contact these guys. And 
sounds like an exciting time. Um, it's something that's been going on for a while, and it seems to gain steam yeah. every year, I'd have to it's, say. We tripled our numbers last year. And the thing that's really neat is that this is for kids by kids. And as adults, yeah, we go to conferences, but let's have kids have the opportunity to attend a conference on something that they are wonderful at. So. Interesting. Well, I can tell you guys are passionate about this. I know the kids around here who are hanging around today are passionate, so we'll bring that same passion to February 22nd. So thanks for taking the time. Remember, if you want to know more, go online, ask some questions, but uh, get out of your comfort zone. Give this a try. This is a great opportunity, and it's so close. Thank you all, and uh, good luck on February 22nd. Thank, Thank you. Well, we're over outside of Countryside Fire Station. Um, we're with Fireman Tony Rodkey to talk about fire hydrants. And you've got a little uh, certificate here going on. Tell us what you got happening here, Tony. Well, we have a program. It's called Adopt a Fire Hydrant. And what you can do is stop by the fire station, and we'll give you one of these certificates for a fire hydrant that you're willing to take care of. Make sure it's free of any debris, snow, that we can see this nice tall flag off the fire hydrant and basically make it quick access for the firefighters in case there was a fire. Okay, so you're looking like a lot of times people will take the, 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 what, the fire hydrant that's in their neighborhood. They'll make sure that the snow doesn't get piled over top of it is what's going on. Exactly. Okay, and tell us why that's important because seconds count. You just summed oh. it up. Second, <laughs> se seconds count. And if we have to spend time digging out a fire hydrant, that's taking time away from getting water on the fire. Okay. So now, so to get involved in this, all I have to do is stop over the fire station. Stop by the fire station. You can ask for me, or any of the firefighters. Let us know what street you live on and what fire hydrant you'd like to take care of. There are a couple on several streets, and we'll fill one out for you. Give it to you and expect you to take care of that fire hydrant. Excellent. You know what, that's a, it's a nice thing to do if you're going to you know, scrape off your driveway anyway. You're taking care of your whole town and your whole neighborhood. Very nice. And as we're after it, um, when we're talking about as we get into the winter, you always like to say take care of your neighbors too. Absolutely. You all want to be sure to check on any of our seniors that live in your neighborhood close by. Make sure that their areas are slip free with the snow now here mm -hmm. in December. <coughs> and make sure that their heating is working. We don't want anybody to go cold. Mm -hmm. so this is a great community uh, program and, and to help take care of our neighbors mm -hmm. is, goes without saying. Yeah, well that's how we are around here. We take care of each other. That's what makes Hernan Hills so good. One of the things that makes it so good. And now you, before, we, uh, before we close here with keeping the wreath red, we're gonna get to that. We wanna remind everybody about that. Um, one of the ways to uh, be safe during the holidays is to be careful with some of our heat sources. You get very worried about candles at this time of year because we're decorating, we're doing fancy things, having fancy dinners, putting the candles out. Tell us what you want us to do about that. Well, with using supplement heat, such as your fireplace, you want to make sure you keep those wire mesh curtains closed and the glass doors, especially if you're going to leave that room, keep embers from popping out onto the carpet. You want to make sure you keep any item three feet away from that burning fireplace. You want to make sure if you're using a space heater, electrical, or kerosene that you make, make uh, effort to keep things three feet away particularly furniture, drapery. You don't want to be putting your wet mittens, hats and scarves or coats o over that space heater. If you're going to be using candles, be sure to blow them out when you go out, whether you go to sleep, you leave the house, you even leave the room. Blow those candles out. They're the second leading causes uh, of fires in, in the homes. It's such little things can it go, it can make a problem so quickly. I know you like the faux candles. Well, those are the battery-operated candles, much safer, of course, and they are becoming a little bit more popular. So if you can, if you like to burn the candles, try and go to those battery-operated candles. They give the same flickering effect, and, and they uh, actually have some scented ones as well. When you're cooking, be sure to watch what you heat. It's the leading cause of fire here in Vernon Hills as well as the nation. So we want to make sure when you're cooking, watch what you heat. Make sure you have your two oven mitts to keep your hands from getting burned. Make sure you have the lid. If a fire were to flare up, put the lid on it. Never use the water, mm -hmm. especially if it's grease. 
those little tips right there mm -hmm. that can goes, prevent a fire. That goes a long way. And let's talk about why one of the things you do during the holidays to try to keep people from having uh, situa bad situations in their home, especially when it comes to decorations and things, is you are in the Keep the Wreath Red program. And Keep the Wreath Red is about making sure your lights that you may be using for the holidays are not frayed, that they have bulbs replaced, there's no cracked bulbs. Any Christmas tree that you're using is away from a heat source. You're keeping it well watered, making sure that it's not going to dry out. And keep the wreath red is to prevent any fires caused by holiday decorations or lights. Yeah, so you want us to be careful. And unfortunately, what happens is when that wreath goes up, if there is a fire, you take out a bulb, right? We'll take, we'll take out a red bulb and put a white mm -hmm. bulb in it. And that'll, that'll indicate that there was a fire caused by holiday decorations or lights. Okay. We don't want that to happen. We don't want any kind of problems this holiday season or any season. And I know you guys have more information. You're in the schools. You're training our kids. You've got information online. You're available for all kinds of uh, information here. If people want to know more, they can always give you a call. They can always give us a call at the fire station or go to our website. And remember, what do we always say about call 911? Right? If you're in doubt, if you're thinking, should I call? The answer is yes. Call 911. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Let's remember to keep the wreath red, everybody. And, and to all of you at the station who take care of us, happy holidays and thank you. Well, thank you, Lynn. On behalf of the Countryside Fire Protection District, I want to wish Vernon Hills and all the viewers out there a very happy and safe holiday season. Junior, little Miss Vernon Hills. You gotta talk now. Kaylee Kalinowski. <laughs> Kaylee Kalinowski. Everybody get that? Haley. Oh, Haley. <laughs> well, I, obviously I didn't get it, but you know, I'm almost 65. So I have a lot of excuses that I can pray upon. <laughs> All right, and Junior Miss Vernon Hills lives next door to me. This is not, this is not Natalie. This is Emily. Emily Shirello. Emily Shirello, and and this person is of the same uh, yeah, nationality as me. Kelly O'Brien. Kelly O'Brien. You girls want to sing a Christmas carol or anything? Or? <laughs> do, you, do you girls have anything? Do you girls have anything prepared since we're waiting for Santa Claus? Do you want to do Jingle Bells? Jingle Bells is H Haley. Do you know Jingle Bells? Okay, crank it out. Go ahead. Jingle, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Yay! All right. All right. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, reindeer, had a very shiny nose. All of the other reindeer. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you wouldn't even say it. Cause like a light bulb. And all the other reindeer used to laugh and call a name like Pinocchio. And when they let go Rudolph. Join in any reindeer game like Monopoly. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Ho, 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 Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then all the reindeer loved him, loved him, and they shouted out with glee. Yippee! <laughs>
This is the grand opening of the, you know, the, the holiday light show, and uh, it opens actually the Friday after Thanksgiving. Is that correct, Lisa? <laughs> okay, so the light show, the light show will open on Friday after Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas! How are you? Hey, Santa, Merry peace, Christmas. peace out. Santa, I'm going to turn the mic over to you because we've already done a half hour. Well, so you're in charge now, Santa. So everybody in Vernon Hills, come to the Holiday Light Show. Absolutely. And this probably won't be the last year because... We'll see what we can do to keep it we'll going, see. huh? Okay, peace out, Santa. Yeah. <laughs> so is everybody ready to go inside? Yeah. Have we done that yet? No. no, are you ready? Yeah. I'm gonna let you hold this as we walk, okay? Gotcha. Don't jump it. How about we sing jingle bells as we go? Would that be nice? Yeah, you know that. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in the one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in the one-horse open sleigh. Are you coming, Mr. Bear? <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Boy, isn't this a work of art. Isn't it beautiful? Ooh, yeah. How many times have you girls been through the light show? A many times. A million times. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> and it always looks different each time, doesn't it? Kind of. <laughs> What's your favorite part? The snowmen. The snowmen. How many do you think they got? I understand they run a contest. 220. 220 <laughs> snowmen. It's a good thing there's only one Santa. <laughs> well, listen, I'm going to make one more comment. We invite you all out for the Winter Wonderland 2013 season, and I wish you all a happy holiday and, of course, a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. <laughs> As a reminder, the Winter Wonderland drive through Holiday Light Show presented by the Village of Vernon Hills in cooperation with the Cuneo Mansion and Gardens will be held daily from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. through Saturday, January 4th. However, the Light Show will be closed on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. The Light Show is held on the grounds of the Cuneo Mansion and the entrance to a Winter Wonderland is located north of Route 60 on Lakeview Parkway. The cost is $5 per car Monday through Thursday and $10 per car Friday through Sunday. On December 7th, from 8.30 a.m. until 12 p.m., the Cuneo Mansion invites you to attend their Breakfast with Santa. And on Friday, December 13th, from 6.30 p.m. until 9 p.m., the Cuneo Mansion invites you to attend their third annual open house. Visitors are welcome to enjoy self-guided tours of the mansion and there will be a craft station and coloring contest for children, along with a visit from Santa and other fun activities. For more information, call 847-362-3042 or visit www.luc.edu slash cuneo. For more information on the Winter Wonderland Holiday Light Show, call 847-3600 or visit www.vernonhills.org. Happy Holidays from the Village of Vernon Hills and the Cuneo Mansion and Gardens. Hi, this is Kim Christensen with the Vernon Hills Police Department's Crime Prevention Unit. Hey, where did 2013 go? It seemed like just yesterday we were planning summer activities and our national night out and the, the mall exhibition here at Hawthorne Center, and now boom. The lots are getting packed, the, the stores are getting full, people are out there just getting ready to spend money for the holidays. In fact, when you're viewing this, they are out there spending money for the holidays. So let's do something. Let's be sure that you spend your money and we don't have someone else spending your money. 
So let's take you through some shopping here. First, when you're parking, close your windows and lock it up, even if you're only gonna be in there for just a minute or only a minute. Please, please remember to hide small stuff, even inexpensive items. Look, we have seen people break the window of a car just to grab an inexpensive pair of sunglasses that they see on the dashboard. GPS units, cell phones, iPasses, those are all things that are just a temptation to a thief. So please, take a few minutes, stick them in the glove box, lock them in the council. Take the time before you go in the stores to take larger items and just place them in your trunk where they can't be seen. Putting something on the back seat, a, a box or a, a bag from a store that's filled with stuff is just gonna be a temptation. So please take a few minutes, open the trunk and put it in there. A shopping bag in the back seat that's filled is a dead giveaway to a thief that there's new merchandise in there. So please put it in the trunk and lock it up. You know, finally, if you're parking at night, try to park in a well-lit area. You know, most of our shopping centers, the lots are well lit. You know, park in a well-lit area. It'll be easier to find your car, and it's safer for your car also. Okay, so you've parked your car, and you're going inside the store or going inside the mall to do your shopping. We're here right now inside Westfield Hawthorne Center, but it doesn't matter if you're in the mall or if you're just inside a store. The tips are the same. First off, stay alert. Know what's going on around you. And we know you're going to be busy, we know you're going to be tied up, but just try to keep an eye on what's going on around you. All right, women, if you're carrying a purse, keep it close to you. Try to keep it in front of you where you can see it. And please cover the clasp or the flap with your hand or forearm. Never carry an open purse or an open bag. This is an easy target for a pickpocket or a thief. Now, women, what, what law enforcement is seeing in general is going to a restaurant or going to a bar and leaving your purse over the back of this chair you're on. What's happening a lot of times, we're seeing this as a national trend that someone is coming up to the, the person sitting there, the victim, and they're kind of just distracting you for a couple seconds while somebody else steals your purse or reaches in and steals the content of your purse. So if it's over the chair behind you, keep an eye on it, be alert. Now men, carry your wallet in an inside coat pocket or a side pants pocket keeping it in the rear hip pocket of your pants is an easy mark for a pickpocket. Now for everybody, please don't overburden yourself. Make a trip out to your car now and then with, with the boxes and bags. If you carry everything with you, it's just hard to keep track of your purse and it's hard to react. If you're loaded down and a situation comes up, it's just hard to react. So make the trip out to your car, please. And once again, as much as possible, please stay alert. And while we're on the subject, there is no reason to keep your social security card with you. No one in the stores is gonna ask you for your social security number. It's an identity theft issue. Take the time right now, take it out of your wallet, take it out of your prayers, put it in a safe place at home. That's where it belongs. What about shopping from home? You're done shopping in the stores and you're gonna do some online shopping that's so popular. As much as possible, you have to make sure that you're shopping from a secure site. Now, a way you can tell that in the address bar, that HTTPS, look for an S, that shows that it's a secure site. If it says HTTP, avoid it. So look for that S. Look for a closed lock or an unbroken key. Either one means that the security is operative. An unbroken key or an open lock indicates that it's not a secure site. Now some sites use the words secure sockets layer to designate that their site is secure. When you're shopping online, this is important. Use your credit card. Don't use a debit card. It's safer. A great website for learning more about online safety, online shopping safety, is through the American Bar Association. That's www.safeshopping.org. They've got a lot of great information. Now, just as important as being safe while you're out shopping and shopping safely online is keeping your home safe while you're gone. While you're out, leave lights and or a radio on so that it looks and sounds like someone is in the home. Timers are inexpensive and everyone should have at least one. 
preferably two if you have a two-story dwelling. When you're leaving, take that extra minute to make certain that the doors and windows are shut and locked. Take an extra look at that overhead garage door. You know, people don't realize it, but weather and cold can affect the operation of an overhead garage door, especially an old one. Sometimes they might reverse, you might not even know it. So, when it's cold outside, be sure that door shuts and be sure it stays shut. Are you going away during the holidays? Well, if you are, ask a friend or a relative to keep an eye on your home and make it look lived in. And some ways they can do that is just making sure the snow is shoveled if it happens to snow. Bring in the newspapers, bring in the mail, or better yet, stop them. Have your friend or your neighbor rearrange the curtains. Move the car in and out of the driveway, in and out of the garage. And all those things make the house look lived in. And once again, use those appliance timers. Something else we want you to do is call the Vernon Hills Police Department and let us know that you're going on vacation. We'll do a good job keeping an extra watch on your house as much as possible. You know, and finally, please don't advertise on social media websites that you're going on vacation. It's, it's, everybody wants to do it. You get on Facebook and you tell people when you're leaving and where you're leaving and when you're going. Please don't do it. Word gets around. It's just not a safe thing to do. You know, a second ago I mentioned the snow. Hey, while we're on the topic, if you're watching this, you probably live in Vernon Hills. And like most communities, Vernon Hills has a village ordinance that prohibits parking on a village street for 12 hours after a two-inch snowfall. Well, with Santa Claus over my right shoulder, this is the perfect time and a perfect place to end this holiday safety tip segment. On behalf of Chief Mark Fleischauer and everybody at the Vernon Hills Police Department, we want to wish you a happy, safe, and healthy holiday season, and we'll see you in 2014. We'll close this edition of the Vernon Hills Update with a look back at the 2013 Village Tree and Menorah Lighting Celebration that took place Saturday, November 23rd at the Vernon Hills Golf Course. Happy Holidays, and thank you for tuning in to the Vernon Hills Update. Welcome to the uh, holiday tree lighting and the menorah lighting. The menorah is already lit, obviously. And uh, just want to wish everybody uh, it's okay. happy holidays and uh, happy Hanukkah, which started Thursday. And uh, also, Merry Christmas and uh, so on and so forth. So with that said, I'm going to introduce the queens. Give a big hand for the queens of Vernon Hills. We have Haley Kilinowski. <laughs> little, little Miss Vernon Hill. Yeah. Emily Chirillo. Junior yeah. Miss Vernon Hills. Oh my God. And Kelly O'Brien, Miss Vernon Hills. Yeah. Hey. You girls want to say anything? Yeah. Want to want to sing girl. anything? <laughs> Jingle bells. <laughs> Oh, they're gonna sing Jingle Bells. Everybody! You want to help light the tree? The queens are going to light the tree. 
You want to go by Emily? Yeah. He knows All right, we need a countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. For those that still want to mingle with Santa. So thank you for coming out. I'm happy it's a nice night. Have a wonderful holiday season. All right, good night.